Now we want to switch to the other big story today and certainly the implication for the global audience far more pressing. That is now a couple of minutes away from the President of the United States and Tony Blair addressing uh, sort of the world here on where they think things stand and whether they're going to rush a, a second resolution, if a resolution at all, or whether they think, think they have enough go-ahead now to go ahead and take action against Iraq. Our Eric Sean at the United Nations. Eric, what do you think those guys are waiting to see? Well, there is talk here at the U.N. Uh, today uh, that there could be a second resolution authorizing force and setting a deadline. Senses that the U.S. would accept that. We may see a diplomatic moves toward that end because on uh, Wednesday, of course, Colin Powell will be here offering what the administration says is proof that Saddam has been hiding weapons of mass destruction, a circumstantial case. Nevertheless, he is present, expected to present that. Then on February 14th. All right, Eric, Hans thank Blitz, you. I'm Back going to go right to now to the White House, Tony Blair and the President of the United States. The White House. We just had a uh, wide-ranging discussion on a lot of issues. I appreciate my friend's commitment to peace and security. I appreciate his vision. I appreciate his willingness to lead. Most importantly, I appreciate his understanding that after September the 11th, 2001, the world changed, that we face a, a common enemy, terrorists willing to kill innocent lives, that we now recognize that threats which gather in remote regions of the world must be dealt with before others lose their lives. Tony Blair is a, uh, a friend. He's a friend of the American people. He's a friend of mine. I trust his judgment, and I appreciate his wisdom. Welcome. Well, first of all, can I say how uh, delighted I am to be back in the White House and to see President Bush, and as he's just described to you, we had a, an excellent uh, discussion covering all the key issues of the day, and I would like to praise his leadership in the world since September the 11th particularly on what I think are the two key issues that face our world today, which are issues of international terrorism and weapons of mass destruction. And I think both of those issues come together because they threaten the peace and the order and the stability of the world. And what is essential is that in every respect, in every way that we can, we mobilize international support and the international community in order to make sure that these twin threats that the world faces are dealt with. And I've no doubt at all that we can deal with them. But we should realize those two threats, terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, are not different. They're linked. And dealing with both of them is essential for the future peace and security and prosperity of the world. Thank you. Fournier. First of all, you violated the two-question rule, as usual. He's had a bad habit of this. Uh, I'll start. Saddam Hussein is not disarming. He is uh, a danger to the world. He must disarm. And that's why I have constantly said, and the Prime Minister have constantly said, this issue uh, will come to a head in a matter of weeks, not months. The whole point about the present situation is that when President Bush made his speech to the United Nations, when we went down the United Nations route, we passed Resolution 1441. And I think it really repays reading that because we said very clearly that Saddam had what we said was a final opportunity to disarm and that he had to cooperate fully in every respect with the UN weapons inspectors. As Dr. Blick said in his report to the Security Council earlier this week, he's not doing that. And therefore, what is important is that the international community comes together again and makes it absolutely clear that this is unacceptable. And the reason why I believe that it will do that is precisely because in the original resolution 1441, we made it clear that failure to disarm would lead to serious consequences. So this is a test for the international community. It's not just a test for the United States or for Britain. It's a test for the international community too.
of Defense. We thank you for joining us, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. A lot of money. That money uh, is, uh, I presume, ratcheting up almost uh, every day. How large a shortfall is there for uh, the Defense Department budget? Well, I'm not sure that there's a shortfall per se. Uh, we have certain expenses that we do need help on uh, quickly, and that is uh, for the operations that are ongoing in Afghanistan. We did not get all of the money we asked Congress for the last year. And of course, we're still in Afghanistan. We're still spending money there. And we are using monies that we had budgeted for the end of this fiscal year right now and have been for the last few months. So in that sense, there is a shortfall. And we hope we'll make it up with congressional help sometime later in the spring. And how much money is that? We're spending in the region of uh, something over a billion dollars a month, both to uh, continue our operations in Afghanistan and to support them, and also the operations here in the United States that we call Noble Eagle. Uh, it could be as high, perhaps, as a billion and a half a month, which means that we're short anywhere from, I would say, 14 to 17 or 18 billion over the year if it keeps up and we're not helped out. And the expenses obviously will mount uh, uh, considerably. Uh, should the president decide to go to war against Saddam Hussein, what are your best projections on the cost of conflict? I don't think one can predict that. I know the CBOs come out with numbers. Uh, I used to work there. They're very good. They're highly professional. But the problem is simply this. Uh, assuming that we do, in fact, go to war, and I guess that's up to Saddam Hussein himself as much as anyone else, we don't know how long it'll last. We don't know the damage that will be done. We've committed, the president has committed, to uh, helping Iraq after a war, a liberated Iraq, very much as we are now helping the Afghans rebuild their own country. And I don't know how much that will cost. So it's uh, very, very hazardous to predict what the cost of the war is. I would say, though, that in 1991, we spent $60 billion for the war then. These are not inexpensive undertakings. Hey, give us your best judgment uh, as, uh, as one who has counseled the president. Uh, you were uh, important in the president's uh, campaign in 2000. Uh, give us uh, your best read on the president's demeanor last night, uh, uh, your reaction to that speech. He's a very determined man, and he should not be underestimated. Uh, he means what he says. He says what he means. This, I, we watched this during the campaign. Uh, if you just saw his face, you could see that he was telling people what was both in his heart and in his mind. Uh, if I were Saddam Hussein, I would think long and hard before I kept blustering the way I understand he blustered again today. And I would either cooperate with the inspectors once and for all and come clean, or else I'd consult my real estate agent as to a nice hideaway somewhere. Does Zakhaim, Under Secretary, Department of Defense, we thank you for being with us. Thank you, sir.